Well, another album review is here. <clears throat> and uh, this is the release of an album that came out way early on in the year, all the way back to February. And why it takes so long to get into it now? Well, other albums came around that I wanted to check out before this, but since I've decided I wanted to check this out because I forgot to check it out based around my own stupidity, we're going to be reviewing the brand new album from Behemoth called The Satanist. And wow, boy do I feel stupid that it took me so damn long to review this album because this album is absolutely tremendous. Riffs beyond brutality, beyond crazy vocals galore. Whew. Now I need to compose myself so I can do this as objectively as I can. But... Before I get into the review, a quick little brief history about Behemoth. Behemoth is a Polish heavy metal band that formed in the early mid-1990s, where they started off as a primitive black metal band from influences from bands like Venom and Dark Throne and Bathory and Mayhem, a bunch of bands from the Norwegian black metal scene as well as early black metal like Venom to a degree, and same can be said with Bathory and Hellhammer. <coughs> but later on in the 90s they began to evolve their sound they stopped being a raw black metal band evolving into a much more of a death metal band with better production to the point where they're actually a progenitor of the blackened death metal style where they keep the look of a black metal band going but their music is being a lot more death metal, and they're taking riffing elements of black metal mixed in with the leads, drums, and some of the vocal approaches of death metal with the production of death metal, the technicality of death metal, just mixed in with the riffing elements and some vocal elements and lyrical elements of black metal <clears throat> and putting it all together into a melting pot. And uh, their last album, which came out in 2009, so it had been a five-year wait since uh, this album was, was out. It was supposed to have been out in 2013, but due to, I guess, mixing issues with Colin Richardson, they decided to uh, take their time with the mixing and release it in the early portions of 2014. And this album, <coughs> boy... And also the backstory, also an, an interesting backstory of the band due to the, during the five year wait was um, <clears throat> the fact that uh, Adam uh, Dar uh, Narsky, I believe is his name, Darsky, Adam Darsky, a.k.a. Nurgle, was going through some uh, health issues with uh, leukemia and it took a while to recover. But he recovered successfully, and he wanted to get back into business with Behemoth, and out came this album. We kick off the album with Blow Your Trumpets, Gabriel, and boy, I tell you, what an epic song to open an album with. I mean, this that song just really propelled things forward <laughs> for the rest of the album. I mean, you have the, the haunting, like... Um, background sound effects along with Nurgle's voice it and the guitars and the drums and the bass that came in with it was just unbelievable um Furu uh, Denevis uh, which I probably just destroyed but um that song it was the shortest song in the album a little over three minutes and holy crap was it a great short song blast beats all over the place technical riffing crazy guitars and Nurgle's voice just still absolutely brutal um uh, Messi Nori was uh, another great track that had a this is one of many songs on the album where the band really took me by surprise with how much they could change the pace up on me where one minute you're hearing like a very fast technical death metal sound to another minute being more of a slower primitive black metal sound which was just Wow. Absolutely incredible what they were able to, to achieve. <clears throat> uh, 
Um, and also at times, well, actually, I'll save that for the end. But uh, then the next song, which was uh, Ora Pro Nobis Lucifer, one of the longer songs of the track at five and a half minutes. Another one of those cases of just haunting epic brutality just throughout the entire track. The song Amen was uh, another one of the shorter ones at closer to four minutes, but it was just an absolute beast of a song that Nurgle and Orion and the other boys were able to construct with this album. The title track, The Satanist, was another personal favorite track of mine from this album, just simply put because of the... uh, <clears throat> atmospheres going on with the brutal atmosphere, with the darkness behind it, especially whenever it would get to the slower locations at times. <coughs> Excuse me, hold on. It just made for a diverse song. Same can be said with the next track, Ben Saw Her, which I probably just destroyed again, but uh. But that track was just like The Satanist. It was just uh, one of those crazy conceptual tracks where it just has a lot of different elements going on. Um, actually, my personal favorite song of the album, In Ab- in the Absence of Light, nearly five minutes long, and holy shit. What a song with all of the elements coming together, with the black metal, with the death metal, with the epic songs, with the haunting vocals, the pace changing, all that good stuff was just right there. And the spoken word uh, portion of the album, or on that song, where it got very mellow, which is another reason why I love this song, because it would get so mellow, and with the guitars and stuff. And there was a spoken word a quote from a, uh, uh, I guess, a Polish drama called The Marriage, which is like about an atheistic marriage kind of thing, where it was all spoken in Polish, but um, the English trans- translation was, I reject all order, all ideas, I trust no abstraction, no doctrine, I don't believe in God, nor in mine. Forget all gods. I don't believe in God. Give me man. May he be like me, troubled and immature, confused and incomplete, dark and obscure so that I can dance with him, pretend to him, uh, ingratiate myself with him, and rape him, love him, and forge myself anew from him so I can grow through him, and in that way, celebrate my marriage in the sacred human church. Which uh, made for one of those very haunting moments of the album. And then after that spoken word's done, you get back into the brutality after the mellowness with the spoken word. You get back into the brutal death metal, black metal, whatever vibe with it. But then the final track of the album, O Father, O Satan, O Son, which was the longest song of the album, a little over seven minutes, That song was free reign for the band to do whatever they wanted to do. And they put on one diverse track. I mean, you have your blast beat death metal moments with the brutality. And then at moments you get the slower, more mid-tempo, black metal primitive style stuff in a great production sound. High praise to this album. High praise. Every single song on this album was phenomenal. I mean, you have your epic epic arrangements as far as uh, how at times it would sound epic, but it was still very, very brutal with its brutality. The, the pacing, the changing of pace throughout the whole album was just absolutely well executed. The vocals, uh, Nurgle, Adam Darsky was able to show on the album. To me, he has like a mixture of Nocturno Colto from Dark Throne and Corpse Grinder from Cannibal Corpse. Mix them together, you get uh, Nurgle's voice, and wow, does it fit this band and the album. The production on this album was solid. I love the production that was done for this album. The guitars, the bass, and the drums would go all over the place. Fast, slow, mid-tempo, intricate, progressive, melodic. It was just unbelievable. So high praise to this album. 
9.75 out of 10. Very close, just like that, the Gates album, to dethroning Accept. The only complaint I really even had on the album was the lyrical concept. It was an interesting concept, which talks about the, the stance of religion, but to me, that kind of concept kind of gets a bit kind of repetitive in some bands. That's really the only real complaint I could really have. And it's a minor complaint at the most. I highly recommend this album to any fan of extreme metal or heavy metal for that matter. Because this album takes on a life of its own. It really, really does. And also the sneak attacks behind this album was the fact that the album was so twisted and demented. But the big sneak attack was that there was stuff that was catchy, particularly within the brutality portions of the album with the blast beats, as well as the um, haunt, the scariness was very catchy for me, and for a lot of people. But what did you guys think of this album? Leave a comment down below. Tell me what you thought of Behemoth the Satanist. But anyways, thank you guys for watching. Peace.